We are without Rory Keane for episode 10 of the Dirt Trackers Rugby Show as he is quite literally roaming the streets of Auckland. The man needs a home, so if any listeners in New Zealand have a comfy beanbag and a spare room, keep an eye out for Rory. We've been joined instead this week by French rugby journalist Jérôme Fridon from the popular newspaper Midi Olympique. We will talk to Jérôme about Ireland's rescheduled game at the Stade de France and end the show by talking to Rory Best about making history in Paris. But first, we're checking in on the Irish camp and hearing from coach Declan Kidney and captain Paul O'Connell. Yeah, I think the lads who came on did exceptionally well, you know. Um, they all came on and made a hugely positive impact. But I had to weigh that up then with the uh, work that was done by the lads in the first 50, 60, uh, you know, 70 minutes as to how they, they had um, done a lot of what you would call unattractive or unseen work in breaking down uh, Italy. And then when the lads came on, they were they were fresh and with their skill levels and everything, they, they were able to exploit the, what the damage that was done early on. And so, um, without a doubt, which took a good hard look at it, because when they do come on, they play that well. You have to give credence to that as well, and too, we'll be better off starting with them. I understand that it would be a good, <coughs> would be a good topic for debate, but on the balance of things, I just felt it was right to go uh, with the way we've gone. That's always a very tough game, um, as our record has shown. Um, obviously France are a top class side uh, you saw at the weekend Scotland had them under pressure at times but when you give them a half opportunity they're, they're deadly um, that's one of the things I suppose going into the when we went there the first time it's something we were wary of the fact that we had um, you know we conceded momentum and conceded pressure at times too easily uh, to Wales and if, if we do the same against France it'll be a very tough day and that's something we're um, trying to do you just can't turn over easy balls to them um, because they're very dangerous so um, but I suppose we're in a good place I thought we played well at the weekend particularly in the second half we've trained well um, as Declan said we have an excellent bench as well it's been working hard and a hungry bench as well I suppose that has done well when they've come on and, and trained really well. There's been a great intensity to training as well, so um, it'll be a very tough tough challenge, but we're looking forward to it. <coughs> Probably the main thing was they had a lot of confidence in their scrum. They, they, I don't think they tapped and went on any of the free kicks they were given. They scrummed every time and looked to either make ground or, or to get penalties, so that's obviously a massive part of their game with, with Yannick Brew at, at um, coaching the forwards. And I thought they were very dangerous. They probably didn't have as much ball as they would have liked, but when you give them, when they were given half a chance, they looked incredibly dangerous. Um, you know, just they seemed whenever Scotland scored, they seemed to have another gear to go into. Um, and you know, it's probably more reflective of the kind of France team we're going to see this weekend. Just looking ahead to this weekend's game, have you been happy enough with um, France's form to date so far in the competition? Uh, so far, yes. Uh, because we've got um, a new new coach with two new assistant coaches, so we knew that uh, you know we couldn't expect uh, the team to be uh, at the level they reach um, during the World Cup, especially you know in semi-final and final. So so far, you know, we have been quite happy about uh, the way uh, the French team play, uh, even, you know, if they were, uh, if they com- um, did some mistakes against Scotland. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was not too bad. The fact that, you know, uh, we were, uh, um, the fact that the game was postponed uh, against Thailand, I think that it was uh, a blessing in disguise for the French team because uh, you know uh, it uh, enabled us to play against Scotland. Uh, that is that was you know easier than um, against Thailand. So it enabled uh, enabled uh, the French team to to create a momentum uh, that is very important. You know, um, in in a competition like the Six Nations. Not as many Irish fans coming over for this weekend's game. Um, do you think that should make it a little bit easier for, for France to play in front of a pretty much partisan home crowd? I'm not sure of that because I think that the players, you know, uh, they prefer uh, playing um, in a full stadium. And the fact that, you know, uh, the stadium will be half empty or half full, <laughs> you know, I think that's not a good thing for, for rugby. Um, not a good thing for, for, for the French team. 
it's true that you know that there will be uh, less Irish fans, but I mean, uh, it's it's. I think that's better for 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 a player to play uh, in front of uh, a full crowd. So no, I don't think that it will help the French team. You know, uh, just uh, the fact that there will be more uh, less less Irish supporters. And I suppose Ireland are thinking the same thing. They're happy that they got the the win um, against Italy, and a few players have, you know, they're they're showing a bit of form. Uh, Rob Kearney showing a bit of form, and Paul O'Connell had a good game as well. Um, how how would you rate Ireland's chances? I suppose uh, coming into this game at the weekend. Hmm, it's difficult to say <laughs> because it seems that you know um, the Irish team um, uh, had had um, a kind of complex in inferiority, especially when they play in Paris. You know, uh, the team hasn't hasn't uh, won in France for 12 years now, and the fact that O'Driscoll uh, won't be there, I think that's um, you know, um, it's um, oh, what the word? Um, it w- it won't help the Irish team because uh, it's he's the most experienced player. If uh, even if they are you know uh, experienced player in in the in the team, you know, he, he's the leader of the team. I I think that. Uh, he's a very charismatic leader, and and the fact that he, he won't be there, you know, um, he you know um, it will be it will be more difficult. I don't know how to explain how to explain that, but uh, you know he's he's uh, he's like Richie Mako, you know, for for New Zealand. He's uh, the same kind of leader, and when you are with your talisma, uh, talismatic uh, ah talismatic no Car- um, leader, you know. Uh, you are not happy, um, but I think you know that um, Ireland was was uh, really um, uh, was not lucky against against Wales because uh, you know <laughs> they lost at the end of the game uh, on the penalty. You know that was not uh, that uh, Shuland have been um, uh, um, validated or granted to to the Welsh team, so they were not lucky at all. But uh, they had a, a slow start against Italy, but uh, during the second half, you know, it was better. Um, we saw that, you know, um, the team uh, started to um, uh, increase the tempo of the game. They, they also started to um, create uh, some gaps uh, in the Italian defense. So um, they show you, I'm sure that the Irish team is able, you know, to win in Paris, but... Uh, the most important for them is uh, they will have to um, to stay closer closer and as they can for the French team. And you know, if the score is very tight um, at uh, in the second half, I think that the Irish team will have some chances to win in Paris because uh, the French team, you know, uh, will start uh, doubting. So what is the most important for for the Irish team is to you know um, take their chances uh, um, and be um, be very efficient. I think that's that's in, the most important if you want to get a win, uh, you know, in uh, in a place like Paris. If you could kind of name maybe two of the French team's main dangers, and then uh, maybe just kind of give your own kind of prediction as to kind of what score you think the game will finish. I think that um, uh, with the absence of Maxim Meda, uh, who got injured uh, against Scotland, I think that um, the number one danger for Ireland will be uh, um, Julien Meiser, the Clermont winger, because he show he show um, he has shown so far uh, that he's um, in a very good form. He scored a beautiful try um, against uh, against Italy. And, uh, you know, uh, he was decisive on the try that um, Maxim Meda scored against Scotland. So I think uh, he's elusive, he's uh, very fast, he's very powerful. And I think that, uh, you know, he could create some problems in the Irish defense. And um, the other guys uh, who may pose uh, a threat to the Irish defense, um, maybe um, Wesley Fofana, uh, the new sensor, because um, uh, he, he is, at the moment, he, he has been discovering, you know, the Six Nations and international rugby, so he's got a lot of uh, freshness, 
and uh, you know uh, when uh, when you are fresh in your mind and um, and also in your body uh, you are still you know um, you have nothing to lose <laughs> you have everything to win and that's exactly the case of uh, Wesley Fofana and uh, he also scored two tries <laughs> for his two first um, uh, caps for for the French team so he, it shows that uh, you know he's a very good player and uh, that he he may pose some some threat you know in the um, to the Irish defense. I be Ireland will be close, uh, but I think that France will win by six points, something like uh, 28 to 22, something like that. Yeah, hopefully Ireland can kind of go and at least kind of keep it tight until the end of the second half, and it should be an enjoyable game for everybody to watch. So, um, yeah, thanks very much, and enjoy it at the weekend. I'm sure you're going along to it yourself, are you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, listen. Thank you. Bye now. Okay. Talk to you soon, Patrick. Possibly in the past, you know, we've been a little bit guilty of, of almost going there and um, probably being sucked in the wrong word, but we, we sort of, you know, the French have this reputation for being all action, all go team, and, you know, whether we go there and try to match them at that in the past, and they actually just play smart rugby against us, uh, I'm not sure, but certainly any of the times I've been there, we have been very uncharacteristically loose in the first 20 minutes and the game gets off the ferocious start and, and we we try things that we normally wouldn't do and it's something that we've talked about now and, and we try to eradicate that and it comes from training it's, you know we've talked about yesterday and today going through the phases not turning the ball over cheaply but even against Scotland you know we saw how dangerous they were they they nearly scored one from their own line when Scotland made one simple turnover two passes later Scotland are, are really on the back foot on their own line and, and that's what France do really really well and you know we have to try and minimise their opportunities to do that. Yeah I think certainly history will, will suggest that it's, it's something that isn't done very often and you know from an Irish point of view it, it would be a massive result for us. Um, we go there obviously full of confidence but we're also we're fully aware of how long it's been since we've beaten them over there so you know from one side of things massive challenge and you know, that we haven't done it for so long but the other the flip side of that is that we have a massive opportunity to write ourselves into history books is sort of the first thing to win there in 2000 and you know when you get to this sort of level and you're dealing with the player competitiveness that we have you know there are the things that you want you want to have sort of real big moments that you can look back on your career and there's no doubt that someday evening can be one of those for us.